The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles and Dom, Donald Trump. Donald Trump, yes, look, uh, we had an episode a few weeks ago which proved very popular with, with listeners, running through the three indictments that Donald Trump uh, at that point had accrued. Um, had, he, had he only had three? He only had three, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. It was simple, simple more innocent days. Donald Trump, of course, the first US president ever to be indicted mm. on criminal charges in the history of the United States of America, mm. uh, going back several centuries. Mm. But Donald Trump is the kind of guy who doesn't like to stop at one. It's like, it's like owning skyscrapers or casinos. Yes. The more, the merrier. And so it is that last week, Donald Trump faced an indictment in Georgia. And there are lots of delicious ironies about this one. And this is the one, Charles, where if he becomes president again, which seems entirely possible, if not probable, probable. Yeah. at this stage, if somehow he manages to defeat Joe Biden, the, the awesome force of Joe Biden, he can't get out of this, as far as we can tell. This, these are state charges. He can't pardon himself. Even the governor of Georgia can't pardon him. Ooh. This one will roll and roll and roll on. It also involves our old friend Rudy Giuliani in the most ironic of circumstances. More in a moment. So, Charles, this is big. Donald Trump has to turn up in the next couple of days Mm. to Atlanta, Georgia. He's got to physically turn up. He's got to go down there. He's got to go down there. They're going to take photographs of him and do the whole thing. Oh, wow. And he has to pay 200 grand cash. For uh, for bail. Everywhere else, mm. he's just been released on his own reconnaissance or whatever. They trust him. Yeah. Georgia does not trust him. <laughs> the judge has said, you've got to turn up and pay cash. And this, uh, of all the things that he's been subjected to, this is going to be the thing he hates the most. Yes. Having to pay 200 grand um, to guarantee he'll turn up. But he is one of 19 people charged under Georgia law. And the amazing thing about this case in Georgia mm. is that it's what is known as a RICO case. And this is amazing. RICO it, is the law. It was a federal law initially, but there's a Georgia version of it, which was designed to try and get mob bosses behind bars. Right. So what used to happen, yes. what used to happen was that the mob boss, you know, would sit a long way away from the people actually doing the crime. Yes. The ground level little dipshits who were out there doing the drug running or whatever it was or doing the violence, those were the ones who got picked up by police. They went to prison mm. and everything just went on. They just got more shit kickers to come in. And RICO was the law that enabled um, the bosses of these organisations mm. to be charged with being part of a criminal conspiracy mm. and of racketeering. And that's what RICO is all about. It's about basically having the people who give the orders being responsible for the scheme. Yes. So what this case does, Charles, is it essentially says Donald Trump is a mob boss, <laughs> to which I imagine he'd be kind of going, well, you know, yeah, mm. I'm kind of flattered by that. Mm. Yeah, 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 because mob bosses tend to be a lot more competent than Donald Trump. Though, They're very they? good at, yeah. uh, at conspiracies. That's right. So mm. it's, it's RICO is the Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organisations Act. Mm. And so what is being alleged by the state of Georgia is that Trump and 18 of his team members, mm. including Mark Meadows, the former chief of staff, and including... Rudy Giuliani, we'll get back to him, Mm. were involved in a giant conspiracy to overturn the election in Georgia. This um, investigation has gone on for, for years and there are a huge number of charges. Well, well, but that we know that that's the case because there's those phone calls that were recorded that you can actually listen to of him trying to rig the, like he rang up the... Yeah, just find me some more votes. And fi- find me some more votes. Like that's, that's case closed. Why do you need to... Like that's, that's, that's done. Why do you need a trial? If you're a Trump lawyer, do you know what you say to that? What? It's free speech. He's just, <laughs> just, just saying what he, what he wanted. Just, yeah, you know, right. He wasn't doing anything. So yeah. the charges, it's extraordinary. 22 counts of forgery or false documents and statements, eight counts of soliciting or impersonating public officers because mm. they had this whole scheme to have the fake uh, electors. We've talked about this before. Yes. The Electoral College, they were going to send a bunch of people who weren't actually, you know, mm. who were Republican rather than Democratic to go and go, but we're the official. It was kind of like yeah. a weird comedy setup. We're the official electors. No, we're the official electors. Yes. And then Mike Pence would have gone, oh, let's choose the fake one yes, and yes. let them in. And then perjury, computer tampering, uh, racketeering, but also election fraud or defrauding so, the what, state. There's what is, big what charges. Is, what's racketeering? So racketeering is, is organising a, a criminal conspiracy. Right, right. Okay. That's, yep. that's the mob boss, yep. basically. So Trump was also told by the judge when he turned in uh, that he's not allowed to intimidate or threaten witnesses 
or any of his co-defendants. And so he's not supposed to post anything on social media. Uh, he can't even repost. So for the whole time that this has been going on, Trump has been going absolutely apeshit mm. on his truth social yes. and accusing all of the judges and prosecutors of being corrupt. But didn't he about a week ago say something like, we're going to come and get you or yeah. something? Yeah. If you come after me, I'll come after you. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. that um, the the federal um, special prosecutor, uh, Jack Smith, went mm. after him, for, reported oh, that right. to the Justice Department, by yes. the way. So that may well have um, consequences. And so what what's the excuse for literally tweeting out a threat against, you, you know, the judge who's well, going to try Well, it's possible. It's possible here that if he does it again, mm. he'll be in genuine trouble. So he's previously um, attacked the Fulton County District Attorney, Fanny T, or Fanny T. Willis. She's the person who's been putting this whole thing together. Mm. Now, she is a Democrat, and this is one of the funny things about the case. It's being tried in Fulton County, right? Mm. Fulton County is in Atlanta. Mm. And this is what happens in US politics and law. It's kind of strange. You pick your jurisdiction, and so this is a very anti-Trump jurisdiction. So right. they'll be quite hard for them to find jurors who are all the way MAGA, who want Trump well, out of jail. Well, I've been to Atlanta, and Atlanta's like the heartland of black America. Yeah, so that's... A- Andrew and I went there and went to a, um, a blues bar. Did you? Yeah, and we were literally the only white people in the entire establishment. And then everyone started singing. Like, everyone in the crowd would go, like, there was a proper band, and they go, oh, can I have a turn? Right. No way. And it wasn't like karaoke. It was like these, were, like every single fucking person was like a trained gospel singer. It was fucking incredible. Amazing. So yep. you, that's what you so, can you do. Know, yeah. Or you can be part of a jury uh, trying Donald Trump. So this is going to be extraordinary. And this is all to do with uh, the scheme that, and there's a fe- there are federal charges to do with the same thing, but they're charging him with different things. Mm. So the double jeopardy rule doesn't apply. It doesn't matter that he's being charged over the same situation. And essentially this massive conspiracy to try and defraud the voters of, of Georgia. Yeah, because every state has their own specific allegations because he tried to do it in multiple states. Yeah, so, yeah well, there's all, a whole thing in all... Michigan going on as well. I think Trump hasn't been charged with that yet, but his team has been. So but how the... do you schedule in, like if you're the judge and you want to do your trial, you've got four concurrent trials, how do you... Do you have to ring up the other judges and go, well, I'll take him on this week? And I think there'll be a the... WhatsApp. But I don't know. This is one of the things. This is why we're in such unprecedented territory. So in each case, the the prosecutors are saying we want this decided next year. Yes. So um, and that's the year of the presidential primary. So there's going to be an absolute shit ton of legal and the election. Yeah, and the election at the end of the year, November. Mm. That's right. Um, And Donald Trump's lawyers came back and said, "Eh, "What about 2026? (laughs) That's a good time for me. We'll do 2026." And uh, it's clear that that's that's going to be rejected. Mm. But um, yeah. So he's going to have to try and do all the primaries and move around and all this kind of stuff. Mm. Um, but it, when he, he'll use them as grist for the mill. Like he'll just hold a rally. Like if, if it's Georgia, he'll just, you know, go and have a rally in the stadium and then yeah. head down to the courthouse and that'll be his day. That will be his day. It's probably exactly what he'll have, what he'll have yeah. to do in order and to then, do both things at once. And then he'll sort of be able to claim that all these things are, you know, trumped up charges against him and, mm. and run be. a sort of Lawfare, perse- persecution campaign. But blah, there's going to be so many of them yes. that it's just going to have this inexorable perception. So, but imagine as well the negotiations, when you mention the four judges, mm. they've also got to arrange it with the Secret Service because he's got lifetime protection as a former president. Yeah. So he, the Secret Service has to arrange for him to turn up and get fingerprinted and do all the shit in the, in the, safely in the, in the jailhouse. It's going to be surreal. So, but how does it work if Trump goes to jail... Does he have to have a sort of Secret Service minder also jailed alongside him? <laughs> like, Wouldn't is, that be fascinating? <laughs> we may get to find this out. So the thing I is, mean, there's no way out of these Georgia charges. Yeah. Um, he'll have to face trial for them. So even if he's in the White House, you can't get out of it. Because it, it's sort of, con- you're in the territory of contested sovereignty then, aren't you? Like if he gets elected mm. president, the Secret Service aren't going to go, yes, we'll let our president go and face jail time in Georgia. It'll, it'll, it'll go to presumably the Supreme Court, which he stacked. But the thing is, the strange, oh, th- the strange yes. thing about it is, there's, so there's a, this is the thing that's so bizarre about the presidency 
It's certainly not true of Australia's Prime Minister. If you can, um, commit a, certainly a federal crime, they, you just don't get tried with it. They don't have the capacity to try a president in the US system. The only thing you can do with the president is impeach and remove. Yeah, right. You can't actually charge him on any other charges or her, theoretically, mm. um, because they sit outside the system and because they can just pardon themselves. There's nothing you can do. But these state charges are going to be enormously interesting when they come through. Now, I mentioned Rudy, Rudy Giuliani is of particular interest. Yes. And I'm really keen to talk about him. Because you know how he made his name? Well, it, he he was a, the Attorney General or whatever it's called in New York and he made his name prosecuting mob bosses. Well, even he? Before, yeah, he was a prosecutor before he was even the Attorney General. Mm. He was he was a fast-charging, hard-talking prosecutor yes. and he used the RICO laws ah. to go after mob bosses. So he knows these laws intimately. He, spent, he made his name in these laws, with these laws. And for him to fight, finally be pulled up in a RICO charge is quite amazing. Mm. Yeah, beautiful irony. I wonder whether that may... Will he be sort of good at, therefore, defending himself against them? Well, he he'll, might. He'll know all the loopholes. He, he might well, but I don't know if it's going to work. But the sad thing is, Charles, for Rudy Giuliani, he's out of money. He's in huge trouble. He's been disbarred in several jurisdictions. He can't practice law. Mm. He's got this kind of weird online TV show that he does called America's Mayor. And you're looking back at the one moment where he was actually popular yeah. uh, when he ran for president and, and you know, completely um, And he d- does he out. do it outside uh, the Four Seasons land- I know, landscaping? I hope so. Yeah. I mean, so he's doing all this stuff, but he's spent so much on legal fees trying uh, – on his legal fees trying to – Defend himself because he's up for mul- other charges as well. He's mentioned as a co-conspirator in the federal charges as mm. well, Giuliani. So he's in big trouble. So is there any indication that because in these cases it's always somebody will flip, won't they? Like, well, that's and and it's first to flip. Like, that's the federal thing. That's why they didn't name the co-conspirators. We know who they are because it was made mm. clear in the documents. But it's clear from that that the feds are trying to flip whoever they can. And is Mark Meadows because Mark Meadows is a remarkable person to see charged, right? Because he was the chief of staff to Trump. And he was a congressman before that. He left He left Congress yeah. to be Trump's guy. Mm. Like, will he flip? Surely he'll flip, won't he? What, what possible interest does he have? Like Going a, to jail for Donald Trump. Yeah. Probably not very much, you'd imagine. But he was hugely um, involved in this. He actually turned up at a place where they were counting the votes in Georgia mm. and put Trump on the phone with someone there who oh, was okay. – so he's been very much part of it. Yeah. He's charged with solicitation of viol- violation of oath by public officer and violation of the Georgia RICO Act. Giuliani has many charges. Um, he's got 13 separate charges. The, the conspiracy to commit a, impersonating a public officer as well, which I think is the whole business with the um, the fake slate. It's amazing. So he's got a lot of stuff that he's up for. The thing is, though, Rudy could potentially afford to pay for his own – legal bills mm. if a client of his paid his bills. Donald oh, Trump. Oh, Donald Trump. He did all this work. All this work. Trump stiffed him on the was bill. On, was on the clock. Well, there's the guy to flip then. You'd think so, right? So don't, let's not forget that after the election, Giuliani was Trump's personal lawyer. Yes, that's right. He was his lawyer trying to sort all this stuff out. Yes. And apparently Trump, uh, Giuliani has been down to see Trump several times saying, you gotta, can, can you pay the bill? Can you, pay can the you bill? please pay my bill? Yeah. And he's, he's came yeah. down to Mar-a-Lago and got to have dinner with Trump. But he didn't Trump get... didn't pay the bill. Uh, he sent his son along. Uh, Rudy Giuliani's son is quite a prominent Republican. Went down. Can you, can you pay my pay dad's bill? bill? He's really struggling. He's yeah. doing it tough. He's, you know, he owes money. No. And if there's one thing we knew about Donald Trump, he never pays his bills. He always stiffs his contractors. Rudy, you thought he was his, your friend. He's not paying your bill. The Chaser Report. More news, less often. So, Dom, what implications does this have for American democracy? I like, love how serious this episode has been. It's just, <laughs> the facts of this situation are so bizarre. Yeah. You just lay them out. You don't well, need to have jokes. It's... Oh, that's, I think plenty of jokes who've been charged, <laughs> um, including some of the dodgy lawyers, by the way. We don't have time to go through them all, but some of the co-conspirators. Remember Sydney Powell? Yeah, yeah I remember Sydney was, Powell. And um, uh, John Eastman and Kenneth Cheeseborough, all the people. Kenneth Cheeseborough was the guy who wanted to have, who invented the fake elector scheme, right? right? And this guy's a lawyer. So you've got lawyers coming up with schemes to basically defraud the state of Georgia. Mm. Um, it's going to be very interesting when this whole thing goes to trial. Anyway, so is, what does it mean for democracy? Well, I mean, I look at, so this is not dissimilar 
similar to the cap putsch, is it, of, of 21, like in Germany? Like, no, that's true. Like it, it's actually... We've never talked about that. We've got to do an episode on that. People might not know about the extraordinary attempt in Germany to basically overthrow German the German government. Yeah, and, and what happened uh, during that period was they all just got slapped on the wrist, chucked in jail for 18 months, and then all came back and took over Germany. So well, they were the aristocracy. You couldn't put them in jail for too long. It would have up- upended the system. So wouldn't. So do you think maybe it's sort of similar to that, where what will happen is, yeah, sure, the Georgia, it sounds like this judge will be pretty strict or whatever, mm. but then appeal, 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 appeal. It'll be 2027 by the time it all goes through the courts. Yeah. It'll go to the Supreme Court. Oh, no, it can't go to the Supreme Court if it's state or can it go to the I think it can, yeah. Yeah, right. And then, but there'd have to be some sort of jurisdiction for the Supreme Court. Like it'd have to have some sort of constitutional issue. And then, well, you could just make one up. And then that's it. It's over. Like it's just like, oh well, it's been hellish. But Trump's now been president for three years. I mean, people as rich as Donald Trump do tend never to go to jail. Hmm. So it's absolutely true. Hmm. But this, my point is, this is the best opportunity because he can't get his way out of it by winning the election. I'm just reminded of the John Oliver thing, where every time they thought he'd got him, they'd. Go, oh, yeah. We've got God. him. We've got him this time. You would time. never for a moment. I mean, We've even, got him. Even if he's behind bars, yeah. you know, yeah, you're just expecting him. that they'll turn out to be rubber and he'll just walk out of there or something. Like mm. he, He's completely, he's a Teflon Don. But then what that does is that then erodes control. Like, that just sort of makes a mockery of American democracy. Well, this is the thing some commentators have been pointing out. He's already done that. Mm. He's already made a mockery of American democracy. What this does is makes a mockery of the American legal system. So we already have had yes. the American democratic right. system being okay. completely turned on its head. This hasn't happened before. The idea that you simply claim that all of the judges and all of the lawyers are just all crooks are out to get you. I mean, basically what this does is massively erodes confidence in the system. Yes. Where Republicans who previously couldn't accept that Donald Trump would lose an election, they just couldn't cognitively process that he would lose. Mm. They're now not going to be able to co- cognitively process that he's guilty. Right. And that's going to mean that they see the whole legal system as being um, corrupt and biased against their guy. Yes. Just like democracy. So it's it's a dangerous thing. We'll, we'll follow this one as it goes along. There's a lot of juicy details. I mean, look, I don't well, know. We, Donald we, Trump probably won't go to jail, but if Rudy Giuliani does, that'll be, won't that be enough? Oh, it, like it's just going to, it's popcorn time. Just get out the popcorn. Get out the popcorn and look back on the videos of the black Die running down his face <laughs> as he stood outside. All se- as he stood next to a dildo shop. Four seasons. Four seasons total landscaping. It's amazing stuff. But yeah, the big question is going to be: Will this turn uh, moderate voters off Trump? The fact that he's basically constantly um, looking like he's going to go to jail. I think it will. Nah. Nah. Probably not. Oh, yeah. We've said it before. <laughs> you're such an optimist. I, sh- you're such I, yeah, a, I believe you're it. You're so naive. The rule of law, it's stupid, isn't it? No. Nah. Yeah. It's Polly not going to. Yeah, his figures just have never changed. They never change. Our gear is from Road. We're part of the Iconoclast Network. You know what we're going to need? What? Fifth indictment. <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it.